Hello everyone! A new two and a half minute Tenkaichi 4 trailer is out! Let's talk about it! The very first combo Vegeta did in the trailer looked oddly familiar. Like, way too familiar. I booted up Tenkaichi 3 and started messing around with combos. And after roughly two minutes, I did it. I managed to recreate this exact combo in BT3. <laughs> Assuming the mechanics end up being somewhere in the 1 to 1 range, mechanic savvy Tenkaichi 3 players are going to have quite an advantage at Tenkaichi 4's launch. Also, one thing I found odd is that they replaced Vegeta's iconic purple energy blasts. Not saying that they look bad now, just find it a bit odd. I guess I'm just used to seeing them in purple. Remember that thing you could do in BT3 when you quickly press the button inputs for Dragon Dash two times? It's called the Z burst dash, and it allows you to quickly get behind the enemy while also dodging oncoming attacks. Well, it looks like it's back in Sparking Zero. Right after that Vegeta combo, Goku powers up via Kaioken and proceeds to do a Z burst rush at Vegeta. That leg kick that Goku follows up with is something new. In BT3, it's impossible to perform a leg kick from a Z burst rush, although the rest of the combo can be easily replicated. <laughs> See those glowing particles that emit from Goku? I think that's supposed to be the perfect timing mechanic from BT3. While charging attacks in BT3, your character would start to glow, indicating that your attack is charged enough to send the opponent flying. Also, you could do a guard break in this state. If your Goku is not glowing, then you can neither send your opponent flying nor break any guards. But here comes the best part of this mechanic. There's a reason this mechanic is called perfect timing. If you release the attack just as the character starts to glow, you'll launch an unblockable heavy attack that absolutely demolishes your opponent. You'll know that you successfully performed a perfectly timed attack if your character does this little teleport thing. I think those glowy particles we see on Goku in the trailer are supposed to represent the perfect timing mechanic. I mean, he's even doing the same chargeable heavy attack. I don't see what else it could be. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him! Goku Mid is back! And that's not all. His luscious, fluffy hair from the Namek Saga is back with him. Also, I love how they kept the original naming scheme. You got Goku Early, Mid, and, and Scouter Vegeta. Unfortunately, Vegeta's second form and Cell Saga Vegeta have been renamed Early and End, most likely for consistency's sake. The second form part never really made sense anyway. I was just speculating whether or not they would include great apes and other giant type characters in my previous video. And I guess I don't have to speculate anymore. They're back and bigger than ever. Uzaru Vegeta appears to have lore accurate proportions this time around. The giant type characters weren't small in the previous games, but they definitely didn't live up to the term giant. Also, the infamous Chomakohu Barrage is back. For all of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, this was a generic stock move shared by basically every single great ape character. At one point in the trailer, Goku says, the way he says it sounds identical to Tenkaichi 3. I'm angry. I'm angry. I'm angry. This quote is significant because it was associated with a certain technique in Tenkaichi 3. There's a utility move called Now I'm Mad. This move took three of your blast stocks, and in exchange, you got powered up to the max. The callbacks don't stop there. Remember that rush attack scouter Vegeta has? You know, the one where he goes, The Saiyans are a true warrior race. Don't underestimate us! A tiny bit of it is shown at the end of the trailer. Goku Mid's Meteor Smash is also there. There's also Vegeta's final impact, the Saiyan Saga Spirit Bomb. This very well could be the instant Kamehameha. Only a bit of it is shown, so I'm not really sure which version of the Kamehameha it could be. Most likely it is instant, considering Super Saiyan Goku's the one who's using it. And of course, other typical moves you'd expect to see. The trailer cuts to a shot of Super Vegeta performing the Spirit 
spirit-breaking cannon on Goku. For some reason, it feels very strange when used on anyone besides Cell. They then cut to something extremely interesting in my opinion. We can see Vegeta guarding Goku's side attack. This is something you can do in Tenkaichi 3, as you can only block in three directions, neutral, up, and down. However, if we were to assume that these blow exchanges aren't from a cinematic, this could confirm the return of Psyguards, a feature last seen in Tenkaichi 2. Could this game not only bring BT3's mechanics back, but also BT2's? Vegeta then proceeds to launch his trademark Volley Blasts at Goku, whom at first appears to be taking damage. Then, after taking a few shots, he transforms into Super Saiyan 3, and it kind of looks like he negated Vegeta's attack with the transformation. I'm not sure if that's the case, because it's really hard to tell with all the smoke and debris flying around. If his transformation did in fact negate Vegeta's attack, then we're probably getting a new mechanic. Also, SS3 Goku just just looks amazing in this shot. We are then greeted with some serious eye candy transformation sequences ripped straight out of the Broly movie. Transforming into Super Saiyan God, both Goku and Vegeta unleash a flurry of powerful blows. The way they present it makes it look like that thing we could do on PS2. You know, if two players collide while in a dragon rush, the little analog spinning minigame would trigger. Vegeta's God Flash fails to land a hit on Goku, but it does end up revealing stunning environmental destruction in the process. Vegeta launches a rush attack at Goku, who seemingly counters it with his Godbind technique. Now here's what I find interesting here. The Godbind appears to be a timing-based attack, which would be a first time for the series. Previously, timed attacks didn't really exist. The closest thing I could even compare it with would probably be Broly's on Android 16 super attack. You could only pull it off if your opponent was standing still and no further than a single foot in front of you. They're just kind of hard to pull off and require precise timing. Even so, comparing these moves with BT4's Godbind doesn't make sense, considering it's a completely different type of timing-based attack. We're again treated to a montage of some spectacular looking transformation sequences, topped off by a Goku Blue Kaioken. The trailer wraps up with the reveal of the character roster. And would you look at that? 164 characters. It appears that they count each transformation as a separate character. Personally, I don't mind. I think it was to be expected. I mean, hell, even BT3 did that. There's still no release date, but I think there's a really good reason behind it. I don't want to ruin your hype for the game, but I think it's only fair that you guys know about this. You've already heard about Gohan Calvo, but what about about... Mandanga. The game looks amazing. It's obvious that tons of work and love for the series went into it. But still, it's also obvious that the devs need more time to polish everything out. I know a lot of you can't wait for the game to come out. But I think it's for the best if we let the devs take their time and iron everything out. Hell, we've been waiting 16 years already. What's one more year gonna change? With all that being said, I'm extremely excited for the game. Especially now that I know it's going to play like BT3. So yeah, thank you for watching and let's let the devs do their thing. Oh, I almost forgot. New Secrets in DBZ Games is coming out in a week or two.